Hello everyone and welcome to my balcony garden. Well, we're inside actually again today. There's not a lot going on in the balcony in December. Today's video is all about amaryllis care. Look at it. Just look at it. The first part of this video is going to look at the plant itself. We're going to ogle it and look at the different features of it, where, talk about where it comes from, how it grows. The second part of the video is going to be the care tip. So we're going to look at watering, temperatures, light conditions, rotation, and uh, basically all the ways you can make it not grow too tall and leggy where it falls over, which is basically what I did this year. So I'm going to help you do not what I did. If you've seen any of my bulb videos, you'll know that I love bulbs. I'm obsessed with them. I will link the playlist for all my bulb videos up and you can have a look if you are also bulb obsessed. Let's get started. So let's talk about this wonder. Amaryllises are herbaceous, bulbous perennial plants. They're native to many parts of South America and they're commonly sold around this time of year, around Christmas or New Year at least in the Northern Hemisphere, and they are mostly grown as a temporary indoor house plant. That doesn't mean, of course, that you have to throw it away once it's finished flowering. You can um, care for it and you can make it bloom again in the next year. I bought this beauty from my local supermarket because I'm too lazy to go to the garden centre. The supermarket's just around the corner. It was all potted up. The flower spike and the leaves were just starting to emerge. And I, th I think one of the attractions of amaryllis as well, apart from obviously, I mean, look, look at the flowers. They're so easy to care for. You don't actually have to do anything. You just bring it home and give them certain conditions that they would like. And then you're just gonna end up with a display like this. So you feel really talented as a gardener. <laughs> Amaryllises have these large fleshy bulbs, which are normally planted only half submerged into the soil. And they have these beautiful, tall, sword-like leaves. They're long-lasting and they can be deciduous or evergreen, depending on what species you have or variety. The leaves will normally be the first to emerge and once they've started to emerge, then comes this hollow, long, tall stem. In botany, it's called a scape. And scapes are commonly seen in subterranean plants, so plants that actually prefer to be underneath the ground, so things like bulbs and rhizomes. And then on the top of the scape are the flowers. They're large and showy, and this cluster of flowers can range from two flowers up to 14 on one bulb. So I have two stems here. This is one bulb, but two stems, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I've got about 11. 11. The form of each individual flower is what we call a funnel form and together they create an umbel inflorescence and it's just to die for. So it's a little bit about our amaryllis, let's move to the care tips. So when you bring your amaryllis home, where do you place it? Well, they do love bright indirect light, similar to poinsettias, so just find a bright windowsill or a spot where they're going to receive lots of indirect light. They can also receive direct light for some um, time during it, during the day because the temperatures and the heat of the sun isn't strong this time. And like any indoor plants, so something like primroses as well, if you bring them indoors, if you want to extend the flowering period, make sure that you place your amaryllis in a cool part of your home. Temperatures from around 18 Celsius to 21 are ideal. And if you pop it on somewhere where there's a radiator, maybe just turn the radiator down a bit. It's actually a really important care tip, the first one, because if you don't place your amaryllis near the light source, they're going to stretch towards the light. And because this, the stem or the scape is strong, it's also hollow, as I mentioned. So the further away from the light source it is, the taller the stem is going to grow because it wants to reach the light. The thinner the stem is also going to be, and there's a chance of toppling. And I tell you, that's what I did this year. So I've actually had to stake this beautiful plant when it comes to watering, if the plant hasn't started to emerge yet, you only need to water the bulb very sparingly, maybe once a week and a, a minimal amount of water at that. Once you start to see movement and growth, water maybe between one to two times a week just to keep the soil moist but never saturated. Make sure that the bulb is also never sitting in water because that could lead to rot. So for most homes, this is probably about one to two times a week. And the last care tip is to rotate. I've actually already touched on this, but I'll just go into a bit more detail. 
you can see that obviously the plant is very top heavy. The flowers are all up here and then they're only supported by this single stem. Similar to hyacinths, wherever they detect the light source, they're gonna to lean towards that. If they're far away from the light source, they're going to elongate their stem even further. That's gonna actually weaken the plant. And that could mean the plant is gonna to topple or even snap in half the stem at least. So by rotating your amaryllis regularly, the plant doesn't get used to receiving um, light from one side, which is going to make it stay more erect. And then the chances of it toppling over, the stem breaking, are greatly reduced. So that was my uh, short and sweet video about amaryllis care. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to be doing an aftercare video for this plant as well. I always do aftercare videos for all my bulb videos. If you enjoyed the video and you'd like to support the channel, subscribe and give it a thumbs up. I hope you're all enjoying the festive period and I send you all my good wishes and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.